What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Fall Damage Central podcast here on YouTube. Whoa, almost knocking stuff off my desk. I'm excited. It's the first episode of the new year, 2024. And we got a little uh, gaming challenge that we're going to be talking about here in a minute. But first and foremost, as always, all through 2023 and now all through 2024, my uh, partner in crime over here or here, old school legend. What's up, old school? Yo, yo, yo. What's happening? Uh, not much, man. Not much. How's 2024 treating you so far? We're 11 days in. So far, so good, man. Happy New Year, everybody. Hope everybody had a great and safe New Year. And so far, you know, 11 days in, 2024 has not been bad. This has been my first full week back um, since the holidays. And, you know, it's it's feeling like normal again. I'm excited because tomorrow's payday Friday. And uh, it's going to it's gonna feel like a, a regular payday Friday. So let's go. Yeah, man. I, uh, I don't know. Uh... This past weekend, my wife had family in town, so I was way too busy to record for last week. Um, and then the week before, I was just trying to recuperate from the holidays, and I was just, you know, kind of in uh, vegetate mode. Just sit on the couch, put on the TV, and do absolutely nothing. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's Those are the best times, man. Love yeah. chilling on the couch doing nothing. <laughs> That's right. Uh but some big news before we get into our gaming challenge of 2024. Big news in WWE on from Monday Night Raw week before it wasn't this week. It was last week, right? Last week. Yep. Last week. Um, the Rock shows up on Raw, calls out Roman, doesn't really call him out, call out Roman Reigns, but he alludes to wanting to be sit at the head of the table which everybody knows what that means. There's a lot of speculation going on that it's going to be Rock and Roman at WrestleMania and not at uh, not Ro uh, Roman and Cody. Um, what, what are you thinking? Because I am a big uh, proponent of Cody versus Roman. Cody's got to finish his story. That's what they've been building to for the past year. They need to go with Cody and Roman at WrestleMania. I don't care if they do Rock and Roman at Rumble, even though I would think it's a given that, uh, well, not at the Rumble, at uh, Elimination Chamber. But even though if they do that, I would think it's a given that the Rock is going to lose to Roman at Elimination Chamber. Um, but what do you think is going to happen? Uh, I'm not I'm not quite sure. Uh, I'm. I agree with you, uh, Cody. Cody and Roman needs to be the main event at WrestleMania. Let Cody finish his story. It's picking up from last year. I think he's had, you know, all of 23 to, to build himself back up. Had a really good feud with Brock Lesnar, culminating during the summer. And, uh, you know, we last saw him in War Games. That was an awesome match with uh, Randy Orton coming back. And just now he finished up this feud with uh, Shinsuke Nakamura. So, I'm all about Cody winning the Rumble. I'm all about Cody ch challenging Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. I I really do not want to see The Rock versus Roman Reigns, at least not at a on a big stage like WrestleMania. Um, you know, I I liked The Rock back in the day. I enjoyed him when I was younger, and it was great. And I it's cool to see him now, but I don't really need to see him wrestle. Um, yeah. And I don't need to see him wrestle against a top guy because let, let's be realistic. We, we already know if he, you know, they, they set the match up with him and Roman Reigns, he's not going to win. Um, and I, I, I like to have that, that suspension of disbelief, it, you know, so I don't want to go in there already knowing what the outcome is. So I, in my opinion, I think that's a wasted main event WrestleMania. It needs to be Cody Rhodes. I think night one, we should see Seth Rollins versus CM Punk. And night two needs to be Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns with Cody Rhodes winning that belt finally. Yes. Um, I think, like, the thing with, like, The Rock scared me when he was on Raw last week because... He took a couple punches and then he did a spine buster on Jinder Mahal and he did a people's elbow and it looked like he just ran a damn marathon. 
Like he was yeah. so tired. And he's like, I loved him back in the day. He was one of my favorite wrestlers. It was uh, Stone Cold and Rock, as is, as was everybody else's favorite wrestlers, I'm sure. But I just, everybody knows he's only around for a short period of time. <clears throat> he's not going to win the title. So I think the best they could, it's, it's a tricky situation because they have so many like big stars right now. Like, I don't like, they got to be careful where they put everybody, but Cody needs to face Roman or Romania. Cody needs to win. And then I feel like then the rock should come back, like the SmackDown after WrestleMania or something and confront Roman reigns and build to the next pay-per-view for that and do it after mania because yeah. rock and Roman don't really need a title to sell tickets. And the rock should really beat, Roman to put an end to the whole bloodline head of the table story. Yeah, I think that's one way to to end up the, the bloodline story. But I mean, I I really think Roman Roman beats the Rock. Ooh, ten times ten times out of ten, I don't really? I don't see the Rock I don't see the Rock beating Roman at all. Wow. Then then no. who do you think at some because somebody's got to come in from their bloodline to beat Roman. Would you, do you think that'll be like Jimmy or Jay or solo or would they bring somebody I, else in? I think, uh, I, I really think solo could be the guy. I, I kind of feel like they're going to put the, uh, the rocket on solos back just the way like they've consistently built him up. Mm -hmm. I, I would like to see, and this is just fantasy booking here. I'd like to see Cody win at WrestleMania. And, you know, if Roman gets pissed because, everyone or not everyone but at least um jimmy and solo weren't able to you know intercept cody Rhodes from beating him what what i would really like to see what i think would be badass um would be dustin Rhodes coming back oh. um like i i don't know when his contract is up i don't know like what they would do man but if dustin Rhodes was able to get there and be at wrestlemania and just be in the crowd and then here, here you go, Cody and Roman going at it. Then all of a sudden, like Jimmy Uso comes in, does something. Solo comes in and does something, and then Dustin Rhodes hops the ramp or hops the guardrail, goes in the ring, man. Oh, dude! Then you have both the Rhodes brothers beating the shit out of the Bloodline. Oh, that'd be man. so sick! I didn't even think of that. I would, that's what I would love to happen, man. And then Cody beats Roman, and then Roman gets pissed off at Jimmy and Solo because he's like, man, like you guys, you suck, blah, 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 whatever. And then for like the next year, like don't have Roman on TV. You know, once he, once he loses, like have him, have him be gone for a while. Then maybe bring him back during the summer and just start building a program with Solo. And then finally Solo's like, you know what, man, I had enough of you. Takes out Roman Reigns, and then that's the end of the bloodline. So for when – when does Roman beat Rock then? I don't, I don't, I don't think it happens at all. Really? After, yeah, dude, I think it's got to happen after Rock made that comment. I just like, so I, I want to see him tease it. I don't want to see it happen though, man, because it's just like the the Rock has been gone for so long, man. Like he hasn't wrestled in in forever. So it's like, can you imagine having an older guy who has not wrestled in years beating? A guy who is the top star right now and granted Ro roman reigns doesn't really wrestle that much he knows yeah. a few times a year for like the big matches but i just i can't in my mind i can't fathom that happening because to me i think roman loses all credibility if he loses to the rock because here it was he's beating all of these guys in their prime all these young athletes you know he's just roman reigns is just going through them and then all yeah. of a sudden like the older guy comes back and who hasn't wrestled in years are you telling me that he is that good that he could beat the top guy? So I like your idea of Roman beating Rock now that I think about it. I like that idea. But where does that happen now? Would it be like WrestleMania Backlash? Um, no, nah, they'd, they'd probably save it up for like SummerSlam, maybe like SummerSlam or like Survivor Series. Because I can't, I can't imagine the Rock can get into ring shape between now and WrestleMania. Yeah. I, I just, he, I, unless he's, he gets in the ring and he's like, so the thing is, um, and, and, and it's the same thing with like MMA too. Um, when, when you get hurt or like whatever else, 
you, you could do as much cardio as you want. You could run on that treadmill for a hundred miles a day. You could run the hills for a hundred miles a day. Nothing is going to prepare you for that live work that you're getting back into. And I mean, I can't, I can't attest for pro wrestling, but I'm assuming it's the same as MMA. So I remember when I, when I was doing MMA, when I was younger, I, I got injured and I wanted to stay my, I wanted my cardio to stay up. So I was always on the treadmill. I was always walking, doing something just to kind of get that heart rate up, get my cardio up. When I finally got healed and I started rolling again live, I, it, it felt like I hadn't run in years. It was the mm. most insane thing. But after a while you build up that stamina again and then you're good. So I don't, I don't see how the rock is going to be able to do that between now and the biggest show WrestleMania. So unless they just do something where it's, it's like a, like a five minute match or something like that, some kind of like squash match or something where he doesn't have to be that active. And you know, that that's that at uh, the, what, what's the event in Perth elimination chamber. Yep. And that's going to be in February. So but me personally, man, like I, I really, I don't want to see The Rock versus Roman. I don't. Man, yeah, <laughs> it's. I'm, I'm, it, I have to be. I'm probably in like the the point two percent of people that don't want to see that. But yeah. I just, it to me, it's just one of those things. It's kind of like the whole like Undertaker versus Sting. Yeah, it's always like the what if, the what if, the what if. I always love having that what if, and I'm yeah, so yeah. glad that it, I'm so glad the Undertaker versus Sting never happened, because had that happened when Sting was in WWF or WWE when he was, the Undertaker was on his way out. So to me, they wouldn't have had as good of a match as I think they could have had. Mm. Which, which is that this is like my same thought with Roman Reigns versus The Rock. I just don't think. The, right now, I don't think The Rock could perform at the level he needs to or be at that level with Roman Reigns in order to put on a good match. Yeah, and, and that's kind of that's another reason why I said they got to be careful with what they do because um, I feel like Rock's going to come in and not want to look weak for his brand. So whether he wins or loses, they're going to... I don't think it's going to be a clean win for Roman if Roman wins. And I don't think there is any scenario where Rock wins because he's, they can't give him the title. Um, but they got to be really careful because if Rome, if Roman beats Rock, well, I don't know. I, I guess the only way they could go before if they face off before WrestleMania is Roman beat Rock, and that's it. Yeah. I wonder... So you, if they do... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. You're good. Um, so if, for some reason, they do Elimination Chamber, The Rock versus Roman Reigns, I I just, I can't see, I can't see The Rock going over and beating Roman Reigns. I think Roman yeah. Reigns beats him and then sets up the main event for WrestleMania. But at the main event at WrestleMania, if it is Cody and Roman Reigns, do we really see... Cody finish his story or does Roman beat him again? Because I know they, they've been bringing up the, the title reign of Hulk Hogan, who yeah. is the longest reigning now. Um, so do they want to beat Hogan's record? I hope they don't, because if that's the case, then I, I believe Roman Reigns would have to go until SummerSlam after this year's SummerSlam. September. Potentially, yeah. p- potentially to next year um with the title in order to break that and at this point it it just doesn't matter because number one he's not really he's not there so he's not defending that title um i saw a graphic on twitter and it was uh it showed hulk hogan's reign and how many title defenses he had during his title reign and they showed roman reigns title reign and how many title defenses he had and roman reigns only has like a quarter of the title defenses that Hulk Hogan had. So to me, if the guy's not there and he's not defending his belt, like, I mean, what's, what's the point? You know what I mean? Yeah. So in, in the UFC, like what's really good, what makes like the really good champions, like John Jones, for instance, John Jones is undefeated. Um, he has one loss, which was a disqualification. So like nobody really counts that. Um, 
but he's had he's had the light heavyweight title forever. And I mean, this guy was defending it, you know, three, four times a year and just beating dudes. And now that's that's actually pretty active for an MMA, an MMA fighter. So in my opinion, in that scenario, his title reign became great because he was defending it pretty much every single chance that he was able to. And he was winning. Whereas now Roman Reigns, who who had the last title shot, man? I can't even remember. When's the last uh, time he defended that title? Was it L.A. Knight? Oh yeah, L.A. Knight. Yeah, and that was at the uh, that was at the Saudi show, wasn't it? A couple months yes. back. Yes, in November, then, I believe. And then before that, I can't even remember who who he beat, who he defended that title against. Oh yeah, I can't remember either. Yeah. See, so it's. It, you know, to me, it doesn't matter, dude. Like, okay, great. You know, it's awesome that he's had that belt for a while, but if you're not doing anything with it, then what's the point? Yeah. Do you think uh, The Rock went into business for himself that night on Raw and went off script? Um, I don't think so. I, I, I think it was probably planned. Um, You know, it's possible he did, but I I think they probably went out there and they just – just to kind of throw a bone in the crowd, just to see how, how the reaction was. Mm -hmm. And of course the reaction was what they thought it was going to be. Yeah. Everybody went ape shit. Yep. So the, the other issue I have is a lot of the kids don't really know who the rock is. Like they know him as like uh like Dwayne Johnson. They see, they might've seen him in like a couple of movies. They don't yep. know him as like the wrestler, the rock, but the young kids know who Cody Rhodes is. And the young kids fucking love them some Cody Rhodes. So I think the younger fans really want Cody Rhodes instead of The Rock. And I think the older fans like you and I, well, minus me, um, want to see The Rock instead. See, I don't want to see The Rock at Mania. Like, I would like to see a Rock-Roman match. And now that hearing your scenario, I would like to see Roman beat The Rock. But I, in no circumstance do I want rock and Roman at WrestleMania? I want it to be Cody and Roman Cody winning. And then Cody hold the freaking title. If it's good, if he's uh, hot enough for the next three, four years to beat Hogan's reign or whatever. Yeah. Let them, uh, let them do rock versus Roman on a SmackDown. <laughs> <laughs> All the rock ain't having that. <laughs> he, he, if he's coming back, it's going to be for a big payday. Yeah. Or you know what they should do is that they should do like a special a special edition and they should do like a Wednesday night smackdown. Oh and then if, like the, the the big match is the rock versus Roman Reigns. Like no nobody would watch Dynamite. I, that's what <laughs> I was just thinking. Yeah. Just to bury uh bury dynamite on that Wednesday. Yeah. That'd be funny. So man. speaking of dynamite, you know what's really funny is uh you know, a couple days ago there was like that whole exchange with uh Tony Khan on Twitter. Uh, yep. talk, talk, talking shit about Jinder Mahal and how he's getting that title shot on Monday and he hasn't won a match or anything. Mm -hmm. So the rating, the ratings for Dynamite came out today and they've been the lowest that they've been in months. So it was only like seven something, like 787 or something like that. 787,000 people watched Dynamite. So their ratings went down. And, it, you know, I don't I don't know if it's specifically because of Tony Khan running his mouth, but a lot of people are poking fun saying, hey, this guy tried to hinder gender and look what happened. <laughs> yeah. nope. And even the, uh, even like the teases, like the rumors going around about uh, Sasha Banks or uh, whatever the hell her name is now, Mercedes Monet yeah. um, showing up on dynamite and it. It's just, yeesh. Uh, I people like watching somebody, it, man. Yeah. I saw somebody saying, uh, uh, Tony Khan finally made a superstar, Jinder Mahal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's so I'm actually man. I'm actually excited for Monday because I want to see this match with him and Seth Rollins because I want to see if Jinder Mahal comes out. I don't want to see if the crowd is like cheering him. Like yeah. how nuts would that be? <laughs> how nuts would that be? This dude comes out and he gets like the loudest pop of everybody. That would be funny <laughs> because after after that Raw with uh, the Rock, they were booing the crap out of him. They hated him. Yeah. I don't know, man. Pe people shit on Jinder Mahal, but I like him, man. I, I enjoyed yeah. his title run. I thought that was amazing because it was so unexpected. 
See, that was before I even got back into wrestling. That was a few years ago, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe about 10 years now. 10 years? God dang. Yeah, I maybe. definitely wasn't watching. Maybe, maybe about eight years, seven years, something like that. It's it, It's been up there. But yeah, I mean, it was great because it was so unexpected. But like so many people were so pissed. And I was like, man, this is this is fantastic because he like he he fought Randy Orton and um everybody just expected Randy Orton to beat him like whatever. And now yeah. man, he ended up beating Randy Orton and was that champion for for a little while there. And I mean I, I enjoyed his title reign, man. It was different, you know. Yeah. They tried something different. I enjoyed it. But he he ultimately ended up losing it to AJ Styles on like a uh like a, it was either like a Monday Night Raw or SmackDown or something. I like when they can do something like that and surprise people. Um, because like we said with Roman, it's obvious the last like six, seven opponents he's had, it's like, yeah, he's winning. Like we don't have to even speculate on it. Yeah. Like I really hate those like wrestling reporters, like the dirt sheets and stuff like that, yeah. because I'm just like, why, like, why do you want to ruin stuff for people? Like, Oh, we heard this is going to happen. So be on the lookout. But, like like why like who cares yeah. man it's it's like ruining a movie can you yep. imagine hey i'm gonna go i'm gonna go see like the new marvel movie and somebody comes out hey be on the lookout for this and at the end this is what's gonna happen blah 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 like nah man just enjoy it i don't understand why people like they want to be in the know and then you have those fans that they they read the rumors and stuff and like they they understand like what's happening yeah so so, for instance, like the whole thing with Chris Jericho, there's like that whole um, sexual harassment or like whatever, but nobody, like nobody, has come out and explicitly said, "Hey, Chris Jericho did this to me." People are just going on rumor and innuendo on Twitter, and like they're booing the shit out of this guy, talking shit to Tony Khan. Oh, you got to fire this guy. Blah 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 blah. Mm-hmm. And nope literally nobody has come out and accused this guy of anything so like why because somebody was like oh i'm, I'm gonna deduce that this and this happened because somebody left a comment a certain emoji or something it it's insane dude it is freaking insane but then i just remember like twitter's not real yeah i was just about to say some some random dirt sheet writer that from a website you never heard of on twitter said it or something yeah so it was um, somebody, the story was somebody had posted something like, hey, it's okay if, you know, you didn't get harassed by like Chris Jericho or if you did get harassed by Chris Jericho, like it's okay. And the the girl in question, the wrestler, Kylie Ray, like hearted like that message or me, like whatever the hell it was. So this reporter was like, oh, wait a minute wasn't she in AEW when they first started? So she had left AEW. She just straight up dipped when it was yeah. quote unquote, the hottest wrestling company at the time, which I don't, you know, that's, that's totally subjective. Yeah. Um, but supposedly like backed out of like thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars, like just like left it on the table. Nobody knows what her, her contract was. Like nobody knows like what, anything was so she dipped and everybody was just like wow that's that's pretty weird so this journalist that saw her uh, respond to with the emoji that chris jericho picture whatever the fuck was like oh maybe this is what happened and maybe (laughs) so what the, the, the whole thing is that uh supposedly chris jericho made her sign an nda and tony khan made her sign an nda and was like okay you know Supposedly, she went to Tony Khan and was like, hey, like I, I was made to feel really uncomfortable, yada, yada, yada. And Tony Khan knew Chris Jericho was his biggest star at the time and was trying to get TV rights and knew with Chris Jericho he could get TV rights. But if something would come up, they weren't going to give him TV rights. So mm-hmm. supposedly, they made her sign an NDA. AEW went their way. She went her way. Whatever, whatever. Now... I, I don't know how true any of that is because nobody has come out and speculated anything. And now I understand yeah. if she did sign an NDA, she can't she can't say anything. But and when it comes to stuff like this, they could potentially ruin this guy's career. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So if something came out and it went to court and it turns out that none of that stuff is true, 
Like, I wish to God that Chris Jericho could go after every Twitter account, everybody who's there, like calling him like a sex pest and a rapist and like all this other stuff. I wish he could go after them and just sue the fuck out of them. Yeah. I really do. Because, and, and the thing is, is it something that could have happened? Possibly. But yeah. Th- th- there's no, there's no irrefutable evidence. So I don't, yeah. I don't understand like why all of a sudden like the world is like, Oh, somebody said something. Therefore it, it's the gospel. We have to go with it. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like, that. that's not how the world works, you know, because eventually you're going to get, something's going to happen. You're going to end up going to court. And if you have no facts to present to the jury, you have no facts to present to the judge. You can't just go, yeah, man, I heard this on Twitter. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I heard that too on Twitter. All right. Boom. No, that, it must that be true. Just, <laughs> yeah. Like that's not how life works, man. But, but I mean, whatever, man, that's, that, that's a whole other conversation for another day. Yeah. I'm not even really following it. When something, if something big comes out, like some irrefutable evidence, like I said, then maybe I'll pay a little attention, but when it's just people talking on Twitter, I don't care about that too much. Yeah. Even with this guy, uh, Gerard, the completionist, like all that shit that's going on, he just released a new video uh, a few days ago and people are up in arms because it's like, oh, how, how dare he release a new video? <laughs> and I'm just like, the, the guy's got to make a living. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like, it's like, oh, Jesus, man. I, and you're watching it. so. <laughs> Yeah. God. Paper, um. Man. So you want to get into this gaming challenge thing? I'm kind of chomping at the bit. I'm excited about this. Yeah, man. Um, I don't, I don't know if you have the uh, the screen grab that you could post up. Um, but it was a uh, this was a challenge me and some buddies put together a few years back. Um, I think it was probably maybe like around 2017, 2018. We uh. Me and a few buddies who were also collectors were just talking about clearing off our backlogs and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, there's a website called Backloggery, and I'm actually a member of it. I haven't used it in forever, but you upload essentially your collection of games and, you know, you, you pick a game and it's supposed to, you know, you pick a game from your backlog, you, you record the time you spent on it, if you beat it, if you liked it, et cetera, et cetera. And it's supposed to help you organize your gaming collection for you to clear out your backlog. So initially this challenge started off with uh, a monetary gain. It was, Hey, who could beat the most games in a year? But at this point I was living in North Carolina. My buddies were living in Florida. There's really, and there's really no way to tell how many games you, you truly have beaten. So mm-hmm. I could have just been like, hey, I, I beat 100 games. How many games did you beat? I beat 2,000 games. It's bullshit. But like nobody, there's no, there's no accountability there. So we have no idea. So after a couple of years, we just kept, you know, going and going and going. And we just decided, we're like, you know what? Look, we're not going to make anything monetary. Let's just have fun with this. Because like it doesn't need to be competitive. It doesn't need to be anything. This is just a fun little thing to go ahead and try to clear off your backlog and have some fun while you're doing it, compare notes with your friends and et cetera, et cetera, that kind of thing. So yes, the uh, up on the screen, it does say 2022. It is 2024, (laughs) Um, but it's, it it goes for 2022, 2023, 2024. If anybody is interested in tagging along with it. So the very first thing is beat five games. So you're going to pick up any five games from your backlog that you've never played or have never finished. Get those going. Try to beat those by the year's end. Play one game that has a bad reputation. And now this isn't part of the five that's in your backlog. So play one game that has a bad reputation or bad reviews. So um, I'm going to go into my my list here in a bit. And uh, Bildo's going to go into his list here. But like, Superman 64, for instance, like <laughs> that game, horrible reviews, probably one of the worst games ever. E.T. on Atari, something like that. Um, you're not looking to beat the game. I mean, if you want to, by all means, go ahead. But spend enough time in it to form like an honest opinion. Don't play it for five minutes ago. Oh, this game sucks. Um, why does it suck? You know, because maybe one of these games that got reviewed poorly, try it out. Maybe you end up really liking it. 
Right. Um, the next one is play a game from a genre that you don't normally play. You know, pretty self-explanatory. Sports type. You don't play sports titles. Throw in a sports title. And again, spend enough time to form an honest opinion. Um, you know, don't put in a baseball game and three minutes later be like, oh, yeah, this sucks. I mean, spend yeah. a little bit of time of it. I'm not, you know, it's not, the, the point is to not make you a baseball fan, but just to kind of maybe have more of an open mind for some games that you might not necessarily have played. Um, so now the next one is play a game that was released on the year of your 16th birthday, 21st birthday, and 30th birthday. If for some reason you're not 21, you're not 30 yet, um, just do the 16th birthday. Um, you don't have to beat the whole game, but spend enough time to form an honest opinion. Again, um, play a multiplayer mode of a game that has competitive multiplayer. So Call of Duty, Fortnite, what have you. And then um, replay and beat one of your favorite games. So self-explanatory. Hey, I love Super Mario Brothers, the original Super Mario Brothers. I'm going to go ahead, replay it and beat it. So um, the whole thing is just to like compare notes at the end of 2022. Hey, how far did you get into your challenge? Were 2024. You 2024, my bad. 2024. <laughs> I'm going back in time here. Um, yeah, you know, and like I said, this is this is just something that's fun between friends. You know, just a little, hey, man, check this out. Compare notes because maybe Bildo plays, I don't know, Pac-Man. That sucks. And he's like, oh, yeah, man, you know, I couldn't get with the controls, yada, 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 whatever. And I'm like, man, really? Well, like, I love Pac-Man and this is why. And just, you know, it's all fun. So yeah. if anybody if anybody's interested in joining in with this, man, it's it's up there on the screen. And, uh, you know, leave comments, man. Let me know what you guys think. And, uh, you know, we'll we'll reconvene on this maybe in June. Uh, yeah. Just kind of like mid-year, well, kind of see where we're at. And then, you know, uh, end of the year, we'll do like another uh, end of the year show. And then we'll finally uh, go through and say, see how far in the challenge we've gotten. Yeah. Leave comments down below on games that you're planning on playing with this list. If you're planning on doing the challenge, I'd like to see what other people are playing too. Like what people have on their backlog that they haven't played yet. Yeah. I, I always like seeing what people have on their backlog as well. I always think that's a, that's a pretty fun topic of conversation. Yeah. Um, but okay, I'm excited to get into it. You want to start us off? With yeah, your five? boy. Um, I'm gonna let you go because I'm, okay. I'm kind of I'm kind of cheating a little bit. I because I couldn't <laughs> I couldn't narrow it down to five, so I have oh, okay. I have several. Uh, the goal is to complete at least five of this list. Um, but but there's a good chance, there's a good possibility I might be able to knock off a lot more than five because as i stated before you know my wife goes to bed relatively early and mm -hmm. you know i don't have any children so i've got essentially almost all night to, to game and coming up here my wife is going on a work retreat for about five weeks Ooh. and it's gonna be osl at the house by himself <laughs> old so, school legend baby i'm i'm gonna have plenty of time and have plenty of pizza plenty of hot pockets and uh philly cheesesteaks yeah man it's gonna be <laughs> I, I i am i am gonna i am gonna miss the missus um but it's gonna be bachelor life here for a bit and it's gonna be work and gaming brother and that's that's how it's gonna be for a while Dude, that sounds like a great time to me. I know I'm the type of person after after like the first week, I'm like, oh man, I miss her. I wish she would come back now. <laughs> so yeah. Five weeks is a long ass time. It is. It is. So this is going to be this. This will be the longest that we've been apart. Yeah. Um, in like the the 15 years we've been together. Um. So yeah, it's going to be a little challenging, man. But you know, I think it'll be all right. You'll make it. You'll get through. All right. So my list, my five games that I um, got to beat, and since you said you have a few of them on here, it makes me feel better because I have an alternate um, that I might switch out for one of the other ones. But first and foremost, this year in 2024, I want to beat Red Dead Redemption 2. I will do it. 
Um, I talked about a little bit on the 2024 pod. That's my main goal going into 2024 right now, beating Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh, My second game that I want to beat, Hades on PS5. I picked this up for a steal at McKay's out in Greensboro. Um, I think I paid like 10 bucks for it maybe. Um, And it is in damn good shape. looks like... Nobody even played it, um, and I heard good things about it, so I want to play that and beat that. Yeah, that is a good one. Uh, next one, I played about an hour of it, and then I turned it off and never turned it back on because I think it was right before um, Elden Ring came out, so I didn't finish it, but I want to finish Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh. Um, from what I played, it seemed pretty fun. And everything I hear, it's great. I just never beat it. So I'm going to beat that this year. Number two, I probably, I played more than an hour, or number three. One, two, yeah, no, number four, sorry. Um, I played more than an hour of this. I played probably four or five hours, and it was a great game. But again, something else came out or something else sparked my interest, and I just, oh, squirrel, and I went over there and did something else. I never picked <laughs> this one back up. But. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Hmm. I want to finish and finish this one. It really shows off the power of the PS5 with the SSD and everything, like uh, all the scene changes and everything they do. Pretty cool. And now for the fifth one on my list, I played the, um, I forget what it's called, like the prequel to this game, um, like the demo they released that was just like a, early story thing i guess to set up the main game but metal gear solid 5 oh i never played the main game i only played the phantom pain and it graphics are great story seems cool but i never played it and i played the hell out of metal gear solid 2 and 3 snake eater back on the ps2 back in the day never played 4 but i want to get into 5 and beat that is that a is that an acrylic case you got it in Yes, it is. Oh, you, you got to get that bitch graded. <laughs> <laughs> See, so it's not in the plastic anymore. And a lot of the PS4, PS3, and PS2 games I have on my shelf over there are in acrylic cases, just like this. Um, I ordered a shit ton of them when I was trying to preserve all my shit. And a lot of them found their ways into one of these cases, whether they were sealed or not. And then my alternate for the five games. I want to play. And if I start playing the other games and it's like, oh, these are all sick. I'm going to beat them all. I might still jump into this one as my number six. But with so much hype around it and how good I hear the first one was that I never played even the first one um, outside of maybe an hour. Hellblade 2. I might want to check that one out and play it when it comes out. Hopefully this year, if it comes out this year. But uh, yeah. That's my six for that first little category. All right. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll go ahead and go with mine then. Let me just. Uh... All right. So my first game. Oh, it's going to be a fear effect on the PlayStation one. I've had this game for ever and i've never once played it (laughs) so this is one that i'm looking forward to getting into and finally being able to cross it off my list is that a heavy hitter on the ps1 like is that expensive nowadays uh you know i i don't know i'm not 100 percent certain um but i know this one is and this is another one that i i have not played so i know this is a lot of a lot of people's favorite too so it's gonna be (laughs) And you never played that one? Mm-mm. Wow. Nope. And this this is another game I've had for like ever. And it's um this bitch is clean, boy. Like Dang. Crisp. It was fresh out the plastic. Almost. Almost. But yeah, not 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 a scratch on the case. And and to my knowledge, that's the original case. It's it's never been replaced, at least since it's been in my possession. All right, so now the next one is going to be Skyward Sword. 
Oh, yeah. Yep. So I actually played this on the Wii way back when, when it first came out. And I just couldn't get into it. At that time, I had enough of the Wii with like the gimmicky controls and like all that other stuff. When I found out they were releasing this with like updated controls, I jumped on it immediately. So super excited to jump into this one. Yeah, I, I was going to throw some Zelda games on my list, but I was like, I don't want to. I was trying to pick games that weren't going to be extremely long. Yeah, and unfortunately, I got I, I got some some lengthy ones here. But like I said, my goal is to get through at least five of these. Mm -hmm. Any more, that'll be some extra credit. But another Zelda game. This one's actually mm. still sealed. Link's Awakening. So I played this back on the Game Boy Color way back when, when it first came out. And I loved it. I really did. So I'm looking forward to playing this remake and having fun with it. I put a couple hours into my copy and it's a, it is a great game. I like the art style. Next up, I'm a big Mega Man fan. Mm -hmm. I've had I've had Mega Man 11 for quite some time. I have played a little bit of it, and for whatever reason, it, it's just one of those things that I just never went back to. So I'm hoping to play through this and enjoy it. Dang, I need to I need to play some Mega Man. All right, so this is another one that I've never played before. That's Fallout New oh. Vegas. Yep. So. I actually own this digitally too, but this is this is already opened, so I might actually just do this and because it's got all the DLC and stuff. I don't know if I'm going to do the DLC, but I am certainly looking forward to this. And from what from what I've read, this finally got a uh, a next gen update. So on the Series X, it's going to run at a higher frame rate. So I'm pretty excited about that. And uh, yeah, mm -hmm. this is this is going to be a long one. Awesome. Yeah, I was going to put Fallout 4 on my list, and I was like, that's too long. With my limited amount of time to game, I can't do it. They're coming out with a uh, PS5 version of Fallout 4, so pro probably oh, hold really? off on that. Yeah, so I, th I think sometime this year they're going to release the patch for uh, the PS5 and uh, Series X upgrade for Fallout 4. But this next one, another Legend of Zelda title. This is another mm. heavy hitter on... Um, eBay. So this is a uh, Twilight Princess, Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. I have beaten the, the version on the Wii. Uh, I've played through half of the version on the GameCube, but I've never played the version on the Wii U. So gonna have some fun with this one as well. So are the games that different from console to console that it makes you want to play play them? Or is it just, just to say you beat it on each console? So with the Wii um i played the, the very first time i played it was on the wii and you know it was fun because like the wii was new like the controls etc cetera, etc cetera. and then um i wanted to replay it a couple of years later but i was like damn i don't really want to sit through like those controls again with the wii whatever mm -hmm. um so i played it on the gamecube uh the gamecube actually i don't like one of them is mirrored i don't know if it's the uh the wii that's mirrored or it's the gamecube that's mirrored but on one of them, Link is left-handed, and on one of them, Link is right-handed. Um, <laughs> but I do remember on the GameCube, and this kept throwing me off, was and I couldn't change it. Was the uh, the look like the look? So you had to press down to look up, and you pressed up to look down. Mm. Um, so I know some people some people like to play like their first-person shooters like that, where uh, you move around and like down is up and up is down. I can't. I can't figure that out for the life of me. So that kind of turned yeah. me off to that. So I'm hoping like that HD version there, I think is pretty much all cleared up. So I think that's going to be fun to just play that normally. Nice. Um, this is another game that I had gotten a long time ago and I just haven't played it. That's a uh, shovel Knight. So this is a retro style game and it's, Oh yeah, this is pretty heavy, man. So, Oh yeah. It's got a manual in there and soundtrack. <laughs> code for a soundtrack that's probably expired but um yeah looking forward to jumping into this one too nice and then this is actually kind of funny so kind of circling back to our end of the year episode uh rhino was uh we were talking about final fantasy 
and he had mentioned Final Fantasy 13. So I had explained to him that Final Fantasy 13 on the Xbox, um, it's got like the update on the Series X or whatever, you know, so it's probably going to be great. I had been looking at eBay for copies of Final Fantasy 13 for the Xbox. I was like, oh, I want to give it a try. So when I was looking for my games to pick out for this challenge, turns out I got it already at the 360 and I had no idea. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I uh, I don't know. I, I need to decide if I want to play on the PS3 or if I want to do it on the on the uh, on the Xbox. Uh, right now, it's going to come down to controller preference. And, you know, I, I kind of like the way Final Fantasy plays with the PlayStation controller. Yeah, not so much with the uh, Xbox controller, but that could change. But yeah, so that's the next one. All right, just a few more. <laughs> um, I'm actually gonna do both of these at the same time since they're kind of kind of similar. Um, Shadow Ooh. of the Tomb Raider and Rise of the Tomb Raider. Again, had these in my collection forever. Haven't touched them. Uh, the original Tomb Raider, which you may or may not see later on, um, remake, fantastic. Had a really, really good time with it. I don't know what happened, man. I got these and uh, they just kind of, kind of fell by the wayside. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully this is the year I get through them. Yeah, I've never played the remakes. Next up is uh. Prototype biohazard bundle. So this has prototype one and prototype two. Oh. Um, I remember back in the day when prototype one first came out, Infamous had come out on the PS3. And Infamous was kind of similar to, to the way prototype was. So I ended up playing Infamous, loving Infamous, and I just never went back to prototype. So it was just, you know, years and years and years. And then one day I went to GameStop and I saw this. I didn't even know they had this. Um, and I was like, oh, this is from PS4? Let me go and snatch that up. So another one that's been sitting in the collection for a while. And uh, yeah, looking forward to that one too. Okay. All right. So this this one might be a little controversial, man, because this game has been out for a while. But GTA oh, 5. Man. So Gotta beat that I, I have this game also on the PlayStation 3. I have it also on the Xbox 360. Um, and I got it on the Xbox One. Um, <laughs> for 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 some reason, man, I just could not get into it. I I couldn't. Um, it's I I don't know what it is. It just it didn't stick to me. It was the same thing with Grand Theft Auto Four, and I just I recently finished Grand Theft Auto Four finally after all these years. But with uh, Grand Theft Auto Six on the horizon next year, I figured, all right. No better time than now to go ahead and do this. Oh, and I do have the uh, the upgraded PS5 version of this digitally, yeah. so it'll be the PS5 version I'm playing. That's what I'm talking about. I love right. seeing a Grand Theft Auto game. Second to last, Doom Eternal. Mm. Um, this one has this one has a free PS5 upgrade, so I will be playing the PS5 version. Uh, yeah. Doom 2016. I uh, I love that game. Little known fact, I was actually a beta tester for Doom 2016 when it came out. Um, there was a company called the Mod Squad, and you know they you reach out to them and they give you codes to play these games, and you essentially test. You look for errors and glitches, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, had a really good time with Doom 2016. I don't. Again, this is one of those I had gotten it and it just fell by the wayside. So. I think this is a relatively short title, so this will be good to bang out. That's dope. I didn't know that. And I, then I, I got that too. Okay. I sh I should have put that on one of my lists. Fuck. My last game is going to be mm. Horizon Zero Dawn. This yeah. is another one that I've I've tried to play, and I just I always lose interest. But twenty twenty four is the year. It's gonna happen. Dude, I've found with those Horizon games, you just got to beast out the story mode. Don't worry about doing any side quests or anything. Just beast out the story. Or else you, or else that happens. You get tired of it because it's all like the same gameplay. Yeah. All right, man. You're up again. What's uh, What's next? 
Ooh, let's see here. Play one game that has a bad reputation. Play one game that received mostly negative reviews. So I have two games here. And I know you mentioned Superman 64 and something else when you were explaining everything. I don't know if these are rated as bad as those. But I don't know which one is going to be. But the two of them I have, the first one, Agent Agents of Mayhem on Xbox One. Is this in the Crackdown universe? I have no idea. I actually have is a copy it? of that, and I've never played it. Yeah, this is still sealed in the in the plastic, but uh, it is. I think it's rated like a fifty something on Metacritic, and I, I, I think I picked this up for like three dollars from Walmart on clearance. I mm-hmm. everything about it screams horrible game to me from what I've seen. So I think that one. And this one, I don't know if necessarily it's a horrible game, but it did not live up to the hype um, before uh, it had before it came out. Callisto Protocol. Oh. Uh, again, I don't think it's an extremely terrible game, but it just didn't live up to the hype, and the Metacritic score was like a sixty-two. So I'm gonna give the I'm I'm gonna give one of these two a solid shot. Not exactly sure which one, but that'll be a game time decision when it comes. And that's all I got for that. So I've got two poorly reviewed games as well. Um, The first one is digital, so I can't show you, but it's going to be the Avengers. Mm. So a few months back, it was on sale in the PlayStation store for like $2. I went ahead and I snagged it. Um, the second game that I had <laughs> was ah! also Callisto Protocol. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, man. Dude, that's, that's awesome. Pretty, Great minds think you like, buddy. That's, that's pretty funny. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So it's, uh, what do we have up next? Is it the, um, the genre we never played? Yeah, play one game from a genre that you don't normally play. So I have, I have two for this one as well. Um, I don't normally play racing games at all. So I picked Need for Speed Payback. <coughs> um, way back in the day, I used to play some Need for Speeds. I like, I like the Midnight Clubs on the first Xbox and stuff, and PS2. But since I haven't played a racing game besides like the Forza since then. And Forza, I haven't played since the very first one that came out, I think on the 360. So, Need for Speed Payback is going to be one of them on my list for game genres that I don't normally play. And I think this is more like a strategy game, but XCOM 2? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know That's a much about it. RTS. RTS. Yeah. yeah. Real time strategy. I don't normally play too much of, but I got it for $3. And. I might give this one a go since, you know, I haven't really played that genre too much. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, who knows, man, you might, you may end up really liking it. Yeah. I've, I've heard good things about it. So. So for me, the, uh, the genre that I never played, I'm actually currently playing this game. Um, I don't really play simulation games. So like Sim City, Roller Coaster Tycoon, all that stuff, not really into it, but I'm actually currently playing Power Wash Simulator. And um, I'm surprised at how fun it is. Like, I'm having so much fun with the game because it's just, it's mindless. You could just sit there, you, you pressure wash, you put on a good soundtrack on Spotify or whatever, just listen to music while you're pressure washing. There's no real story to it or anything. You're just pressure washing. It's uh, it, it's real relaxing. And I've actually, uh, there's been a couple of times at night where I've had trouble going to sleep. I fire a par- power wash simulator, man. And within like 20 minutes, dude, um, I'm out. <laughs> That's great. I got to try that one. Yeah, I, I, I think you got it for free, right? On the, I think it's yeah. like one of the, the monthly games or something on PlayStation. Yep. Is that the only one you had for that one? Yeah. Okay. Next one up is a uh, play game. That was released on each year of your birthday, your 16th, 21st, and 30th birthday. So, 
my 16th birthday. It's a digital game. I got it on my uh, GameCube up over there. My 16th birthday was in 2005. Same year that Resident Evil 4 was released on the GameCube. Oh. So I'm, I've never played it. I'm going to go and play it and see what the yes. hype's all about. <laughs> Dude, you, you need to stream that when you play it. Please, uh, please, I, please, please. I got to get a. Thing. I got to get oh. a. Uh, retro Tink. tank. Yeah. yeah. Damn it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I plan on getting one this year. So uh, that's uh, my. I want to stream all these games when I play them. I want to stream. I want to try to stream the entire challenge. I think that'll be cool. Um, will I do the entire challenge? Probably not, but I want to do a bunch of it. So that'll be one that we, uh, that I'll try to stream. Um, and then what, uh, 21st birthday, I turned 21 in 2010 and that game is make sure I got the right one. Yes. Red dead redemption one. Oh, uh, excellent I think this, game. yes, this fits because I've, I've never played this either. But this fits because I want to play this after I beat Red Dead 2. Because apparently this game takes place after Red Dead 2. So I think it'll fit nicely. And for my 30th birthday, 2019. Near Automata. Oh. I have not played. I played a little bit of it. Um, I think I have it digitally. I might not. I'm not sure. But... This is one I want to play. This is still sealed in the in the uh, acrylic case here. Um, nice. But everything I've seen about this game is dope-tastic, and I'm excited to play it finally. I got that in my collection also, but I've never I've never done anything with it because you know that's that's how it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So for me, I turned 16 in 1999, um, mm. and this year. This game came out. Ooh, we. Yo, that's of one of Dragon. Rhino's favorites. Really? I've yep. never played this, man. So this is, uh, I've, I've heard very, very, very good things about this. Um, so I'm looking forward to this. And yes, this is another very, very clean copy, except for the back. It looks like it might got some water damage at some point. But mm. all of, uh, for the most part, all my PlayStation games are pretty pristine because i uh, I take really good care of them. So I think, 20... I think Rhino's played that like multiple times and beat it. So 21, I turned 21 in 2004 and I got two games here that I'm looking forward to playing. Um, first one is going to be doom three. Mm. Um, and it's, I am going to play this version of it. Um, actually, I don't know. We'll see because um, I've got the, uh, I've got the digital one on the PS4 with the upgrade updated graphics and stuff. So there's a good possibility that this might not cut it. And I have to go to the PlayStation four. And then the other one is mortal Kombat deception. Oh, so this is actually the, uh, the premium pack. This is one of those, uh, collector's edition type things. But so with this one, this came with an arcade perfect version of mortal Kombat one. So that was one of the, the main selling points for me here. And uh, one of the other things it has, it's got this pretty cool uh, Sub-Zero card. Yeah. It's made of metal. I don't know if you could. Uh... Yeah, I hear that. That's sick. It's metal. Um, but yeah, so that's that's the arcade version of Mortal Kombat 1. And then the actual game is there. Nice. That, yeah. I do have it, but not that collection. So that's the cover I got. So I played this way back when, when it first came out. And I did the campaign with, uh, I think the main guy, his name is like, that you play as is uh, Shujinko or something like that. Um, but I mean, it's been forever since I played this, but I'm looking forward to revisiting that. And finally, I turned 30 in 2013, and the game that came out then was Gears of War Judgment. Mm. Uh, I've never I've never played this one, and uh, one of my buddies, much like me, is a big fan of Gears of War, uh, but he said this one sucks shit, but, you know, 
I guess we're we're gonna give it a go and uh yeah you know we'll, we'll see how bad it really is hell yeah um next one let's play multiplayer mode of of a game that has competitive multiplayer now this is the one i probably had the hardest time with and i couldn't really come up with one so i just said fortnite <laughs> i'll play fortnite a little <laughs> bit <laughs> all right i um i got three. Ooh, okay yeah so the first one i got is the og gears of war there's still a lot of people my, that play uh, that online yep yep and it's uh it, it it it's got like the the higher frame rate and stuff on the Series X, so it I love this game so much. You. So that's gonna we be might one, have to, and that we might have to cooperate on uh, do cooperative on that or whatever. Not cooperative, but yeah. team up on multiplayer. Yeah, for sure. And then I got my two favorite Call of Duty games, and that's Call of Duty Four Modern Warfare, and then Call of Duty Black Ops. Nice classics right there yes sir okay so replay and beat one of your favorite games so the game i picked for this one is a game that you if you if anybody watched our top 10 games of all time video from a few months ago um that's probably like that was a long that was like last summer that was more than a couple months ago um you'll recognize <laughs> this game but win back 64 nice win back covert operations uh it's a great it's a awesome third person shooter from back in the day that i have very fond memories of and i'm gonna play that and beat it again and i'm looking forward to that one now, that's another one i want to uh get my retro tank so i can hook it up to the pc here and stream it or record it or do something with it yeah nice nice all right so i've i've actually got a few and so this one is not really so much of a favorite but i want to replay this one because i'm, I'm planning on playing the other two so i figured it'd be good to have this game fresh in my head while mm -hmm. I, like while i start the other two and then i could complete the whole tomb raider remake trilogy but one of the other ones is Bloodborne. Um, oh yeah, this is. I've actually only played through this game once, and I'm a big Souls fan. But this is. Uh, I don't know. I I liked it. I didn't like it as much as everyone else did, though. Um, that's why I only played it one time. But I think it's it's been a while, so I am gonna play through this again. I might actually stream this playthrough. Um, I haven't oh, quite yeah. decided yet. Um, because I'm I, I might I might suck. And I'm gonna get trolled and get good. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we'll see. Um, the other one I'm gonna replay is da -da -da. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Oh, I'm not surprised. Um, I actually. Uh, so the last time I beat this game was about two years ago. I played through it, and I told my buddy at the time, I was like, "Yeah, I think I'm I'm finished with Dark Souls One. I've I played through it enough times." Um, that was a lie because I'm going to play through it again this year because I'm kind of in the mood to play the original Dark Souls. So I'm excited to try this out on the PS5 because it's going to run at a higher frame rate and I think it's got updated visuals as well. So that's going to be real exciting to do. And then the next one is the final one. Oh, yep. Yep. Elden yep. Ring. I'm, uh, I'm my, my, my fingers are twitching already, man. I um, <laughs> I was actually going to play through this last year, and I was like, nah, man, don't, don't. Wait until that DLC comes out, and then play it. That way it's fresh in your head. I don't know oh, when yeah. that DLC is coming out, and I want to play this shit again, so I'm going to. Hell yeah. And that's a free PS5 upgrade, ain't it? Yep. Nice. How many times have you played through that? Just once? Uh twice actually just twice so i did it um i played through on the ps5 i got the platinum on the ps5 and then i went back and played the ps4 version and i got the platinum on the ps4 nice yeah. dang so dude. this is so i think um 
I kind of want to start a new character on Elden Ring. I kind of want to do a different build. I was thinking maybe like a, a sword and shield, like knight type build. Cause I never really yeah. play with those. I, I'm normally a, uh, I normally do like a dex build where like, I'm pretty quick with it. I use like katanas and spears, but I think I'm going to do like more of like a sword and shield tank type build and see how I feel about that. Um, but part of me wants to also just do like a new game plus, but part of me wants to start a new game. So there is a good possibility I'm going to end up doing a new game plus run. <laughs> That's it, starting a new character, just doing like a, a fresh new run. Well, when you get uh, to the fire giant, you hit me up and we co-op and you can help me beat the fire giant. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, 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 st I still got my uh, my character, man. So, I mean, I could I could always run over there and uh, we, we think... can co-op that guy, whatever. I think there's some, a mechanic in the game that it won't let you join up if you're like ahead of that part yet, or you haven't gotten there yet. Maybe I don't know. Is there so? A... I, I I don't remember. I have to. I have to think because I know with. Uh, I'm pretty sure with the other Souls games, if I've gotten past a point. I could go down like I could go back to that point and I could lay my sign down. And mm -hmm. if you're just getting to that point, you could pull me in there, but I can't, I wouldn't be able to summon anybody for me. Like if I'm doing my playthrough, I can't somebody, yeah. I can't summon anybody to help me go through that area, but I would be able to help you. Oh, I have to try that out. Cause I'm still stuck at the fire giant. I haven't played that game in since it came out. <laughs> Yeah, that was uh, I w I was stuck on that guy for a while too, man. And then I I finally got him, and that was so oh man, that was satisfying to beat him. Yeah, heck yeah, man. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm super excited about gaming this year and with this challenge. It's kind of I was kind of in a lull for a while with gaming and everything, but since you texted me this and I started thinking about, it, I was like, oh, this is gonna be fun. So I'm excited to get get going with this. Yeah, man, I'm I'm super excited about it too. You know, I think uh, a lot of these games that I haven't played, I'm excited to try out. Uh, specifically, uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night and Legend of Dragoon. Uh, those uh, th those guys are going to get played on the CRT. Yes, and um, yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. So I um, I actually thought about streaming Symphony of the Night, um, doing that throwing that up on the the tank and streaming that but i, I don't uh i don't know i don't know we'll see yeah, I, or may, maybe i'll just i might just record some gameplay footage and pop it up on there and see if anybody bites i wonder if there's a way if you throw it in and stream and then i could somehow get on and talk to you and watch you as you play and just we could talk shit i don't know Oh, I'm sure, man. I'm sure there's got to be some way. I mean, probably even through uh, Streamlabs or Streamyard, whatever. Uh... See, the thing with Streamyard, I try, and it might be okay because uh, it's a PS One game. But I tried streaming on here just to see what it was like uh, a while ago, a few months ago, with uh, I forget what game it was, but I think it was a Call of Duty game actually. Um, but it was just very glitchy. It's not meant to like. Uh, capture game footage i don't think uh okay yeah I'll, I'll have to look into that then because um so there, there's a channel that i that i follow pretty closely called my life in gaming mm -hmm. and on on sundays they have they do a live stream and usually it's one guy like reading comments and just talking and one other guy playing so the two of them are on there and he could see the other guy playing so it's like cory and uh cory and mark or triforce they... i think like, like are they in the same game. room no 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 he lives in no. uh one lives in north carolina actually and the other guy lives in maybe like chicago or something but huh. yeah every week um they set it up and one guy plays a game and the other guy talks to the guy playing the game and reads comments and stuff so yeah, yeah i i i think that's that's something definitely we could look into because um yeah i mean if you do it too i could just do the same thing like if you're playing something you know, I yeah. can just hop in there and just uh, shoot the shit. Hey, 2024 is our year, old school. We're getting it done yeah. this year. Yes, sir. And hitting the lottery while we're at it. Oh, yeah. I'm down for that.
But all right, guys, we got a lot of work ahead of us with all these games, this gaming challenge. Let us know in the comments below if you're going to partake in the same challenge, what games you're going to play, what games, uh, what you think of our games on our list and all that, um, what you think sucks, what you think doesn't, all that. If you would interchange some games here and there, uh, let me know down below. Like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff here on YouTube. Um, if you're on Apple, uh, Spotify, and any other platform listening to this, make sure to rate us, follow us, subscribe to us. Every, anything you could do, uh, it helps us out. We appreciate it. Um, and old school, appreciate you hanging out. And we're looking forward to this uh, challenge this year. And we will see you on the next one. See ya. Peace.